but I think the kicker of all this is leading that clean life and really having a reckoning with myself to say, I'm addicted to so many things. And I got my fill, my hiding places and all those things. And these things I went through for all the chemical benefits that I got from them, whether it be spending, whether it be food, sugar, porn, cannabis, um, people pleasing. I'm like, girl, shoot, I got a list, right? And to be able to talk about it is just a victory in itself. Absolutely. You know, because you have to remember that all the masks that I wore for each one, being a chameleon is tough. Because you got to remember, what did you tell those people? And then what did you do well, those people know about you? And then that type of thing. Right. And to tell on myself like that and to be real is what I expect from others. So if I can't fully be that, how can I expect others to? And so, you know, yeah, gay, broke, disabled, and addicted. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to What's Love Got to Do With It. And from time to time, I'm planning to have conversations with my friends. And today is the first day that, uh, or the first episode, I should say, where I get to exercise what that looks and feels like. And so I want to introduce you all to, gosh, someone who has been an important part of my life the past two, three years, I want to say now. Um, and this is Delfina Hernandez. Hey, Del, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hello. Uh, it's so good to see you. And it's, I don't know, this is kind of surreal. I know that sounds dramatic, but it is just because of our journeys in coming together as friends when we met how many years ago? <laughs> like, <laughs> 20, yeah, it's been 20 years ago. I was a district manager in Orange County and worked for a financial services company. And um, Delfina actually was a banker in one of the largest um, locations that I managed. And she was vivacious and alive, always smiling. Watch the smile. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I left Orange County um, in 2005 and moved to Arizona, of course, we lost track of each other. But no, you can't, you can't stop fate. You can't stop the law of attraction. You can't stop what is meant to be. And so... Um, Del, Del, why don't you tell that story? How you yes. reconnected? <laughs> I know it's yeah. kind of wild. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on here and mm -hmm. being able to have real, raw, authentic, difficult at times conversations. Um, so thank you once again. It's my it's an honor to be here with you today. Not only to be here with you, but being able to work alongside you the past two to three years, it's surreal because we did yeah. meet in 2003. So we're going on wow. 20 years, buddy, that we yeah. know of each other. Um, and, you know, I, I get giggly when I think of our time in banking, because those were such a great learning mm -hmm. and growing um, moment of my life. And to have you be one of our leaders, you know, one of our mentors has been such a gift. And so to be here with you today to ask you questions, because that's what I'll be doing today is asking you <laughs> questions. Okay. And to see what's brought you here today with what's love got to do with it, right? Mm. And so right. the way we reconnected is good old social media. You got to love it, right? There's this... <laughs> love mm -hmm. dislike relationship because i know for me personally i can easily go through that rabbit hole of just wanting to be on social media and connecting with everyone in the world um mm -hmm. but i i am grateful for it because 
of that is how I was able to reconnect with you. And we have a mutual friend. He's one of my former managers and one of your very, very good friends. Mm -hmm. And I follow him on social media. And I remember you commenting on one of his posts. And I had to reread that. I was like, wait, Joe? Joe is telling what? I was like, oh my God. I was so excited. And of course, little stalker there, right? I'm all like, oh, oh, oh. do you remember me? <laughs> oh, God. And yeah. so since then, uh, we've been reconnected and, you know, we've been taking time to get to know each other, to connect, um, to learn and grow and expand. So once again, I'm grateful for this opportunity to be here with you today. So with that said, are you ready for some questions that I have for okay. you? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do okay. this. Let's do this. So, so tell me, tell me, how are you really doing? Because I do see that you've started this podcast where it says, what does love have to do with it? So share mm -hmm. with me, how are you really doing at this time and space in your life? Thank you. That's a big question to get things started. Um, I'm doing amazing. I and what a, I know a cliche answer, but I can truly say my life is amazing. Amazing in the fact that this is nothing that I had pictured, planned, or orchestrated, curated, or you know, I guess you could say this is the result of complete surrender um, and letting go. I'm experiencing things clearly, seeing things clearly, and really starting to discover possibilities again, you know, from so much that I've experienced in my life, where for a while there, you know, you well know that a lot of questions of, you know, what what is this all worth, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it's like and questions of like, is this just time? You know, not being traumatic, but being real. I mean, you know, dramatic, excuse me. It's like, that's real, you know? And um, so today, it's like I have um, sank into this life that is simple and it's easy, and I'm working on healthy. And, I, and that is my focus. So it's a great question to say, this is the happiest and freest I have felt in quite some time. So thank you. It's a great question. Yes. And, and give me examples. What is it that's um, bringing you to an emotion of feeling peace? Well, it's um, because of the peace um, within me. Mm. You know, I was someone who, um, built a life on um, being a chameleon, you know, and I would just like a chameleon turns colors and adapts to its environment. Um, I found myself doing that from a kid um, into school, into relationships as a young adult and, you know, into my corporate life and personal relationships. So, you know, to be in a place where I can exercise fully who I am, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. is is amazing. You know, it, I'm nervous. I'm honest. I'm I'm, I'm nervous right now because you're asking me questions. <laughs> right. It, it, it's yeah. interesting as we are usually hosting and asking the questions to others, but then when we're on the spotlight. It's hard. I, I feel you. I, I know for me personally, I have a hard time too. I get nervous. But, you know, thank you for sharing that. I know that you have gone through a lot in your life, in your journey. And so share a little bit more about that, of where you were at and where you are going. I would love to know more. Yeah, thank you. Um you know, I had at one point, Dell really had this story pat down, you know, and I told it a lot. Um, most of it dealing with my, um, 
my health, you know, issues that I've had. And I, I have seen now in hindsight that I actually even hid behind that story because I got attention for it. I got sympathy and empathy and I got support. And I began to see that, wow, I just found another place to hide. So I don't really have to show myself. And in that, you know, gaining that type of attention, I said, I can park here for a little while. Right. And just like anything that falls to the wayside and life continues to, you know, move me in this direction of something that I wanted to be, which is free to be fully who I am. So, um, and what is what does that mean to be free for you and who you are who are you oh you're really putting me on the spot here <laughs> um that's a funny thing because i think that at one point in time i asked you that question too yeah right like tell me who it you was are actually, sorry and i didn't mean to interrupt you it actually was like the first hour of rekindling, like reuniting here, and you asked me that question, and I was like, "Who am I? I'm Delphine." <laughs> so, right. tell me, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am. You know, I, I describe myself as a messy human who's divinely loved, and if I, you know, just take that moniker away, you know, I am the embodiment of love uh, when it comes down to it. And I have found that through all of the things that have, you know, these, the hardships I've gone through, you know, these uh, things that I've discovered about who I am really, you know, and, and who I'm not has led me to this continued like shedding of the layers of identity that I had built over time so no one would really see who I am. And as I've been doing more and more realizing of that, I began to gain weight again at the end of last year. And I've been thinking, it's like, wow, you know, I'm experiencing some of the best like epiphanies of my life and really integrating them, but I'm gaining weight. What's up with that? And I think it's that subconscious part of me that is trying to protect myself from being fully seen for who I am. And so I was taking some notes and, you know, thinking about this journey and this dark night of the soul that I experienced. And prior, you know, to when things started to happen, you know, where my life started to unravel, I think most people would have saw me as a very successful man, you know, a family man, you know, with a wife and two children, abundant, you know, I made a lot of money. And I was, um, you know, I was able bodied, you know, I was, you know, I've been up and down with my weight, etc. But I was able to move and travel and do all those things, you know, and that I was clean, that I lived a clean life. And really what, what I was hiding from were the parts of me that I wasn't so open about, you know, so as a family man and a father of two kids, you know, to wrestle with that and realize that I'm gay just flew in the face of what people knew me to be. And then the successful part and because of decisions and people pleasing and trying to really you know, portray this, you know, um, image of success and I have my stuff together, right? That I, I, I'm broke. And, what and do then mean, what do you mean by success, right? Versus you're broke? What does that mean to you? Well, you know, so in the programming of the world and what I, you know, the measuring stick of success, how things are supposed to be. I mean, I drink the Kool-Aid, you know, I'm diabetic, so I shouldn't be drinking Kool-Aid. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, it was about 
um, not just keeping up with the Joneses, but exceeding the Joneses. So in that quest, in that, you know, um, in that pursuit, I lost myself. Right. And so, um, and in it, I, I just was not a good steward of everything that I was given. And in my divorce, there were some decisions that I made. And along the way, I should say, um, I, I lost pretty much everything that I had from a monetary perspective. Right. And um, that brought a lot of shame and brought a lot of hurt and regret and coulda, woulda, shoulda, you know? Right. So that's what I meant, you know, but I've never felt so, and this is not to be fancy with the words, but I haven't felt so rich mm. in my life that I had today. Right. And then just, you know, the idea of um, resisting that I, in this moment, have challenges with my mobility. I couldn't say the word disabled. And in that resistance, it got worse and worse and worse. And so I have a, I have disabilities. And so, but I think the kicker of all this is leading that clean life and really having a reckoning with myself to say, I'm addicted to so many things. And I got my fill, my hiding places and all those things. And these things I went through for all the chemical benefits that I got from them, whether it be spending, whether it be food, sugar, porn, cannabis. Um, but I think the kicker of all this is leading that clean life and really having a reckoning with myself to say, I'm addicted to so many things. And I got my fill, my hiding places and all those things. And these things I went through for all the chemical benefits that I got from them, whether it be spending, whether it be food, sugar, porn, cannabis, um, people pleasing. I'm a girl, shoot, I got a list, right? And to be able to talk about it is just a victory in itself, Absolutely. you know, because you have to remember that all the masks that I wore for each one being a chameleon is tough because you got to remember what did you tell those people? And then what did you tell well, those people know about you? And then that type of thing. Right. And to tell on myself like that and to be real is what I expect from others. So if I can't fully be that how can I expect others to? And so, you know, yeah, gay, broke, disabled, and addicted. Not to like, it, it's like, no, I, at one point, it's about realizing where you are. Mm -hmm. And because of all this work that I've done since 2007, 2008, you know, whether it be personal growth, you know, my spiritual walk, I mean, you know, and then in, and all the spiritual and healing modalities that I've had, we could do all those until the cows come home. But until I look at those subconscious beliefs that run me, all it is is activity, you know, and I learned really well how to mental masturbate. <laughs> right. Get on YouTube, find somebody to listen to, you know, Let's do some sound healing and let's get some Reiki in. And oh yeah, I gotta do my EFT tapping. And all those are beautiful and they're an important parts, but that's where I hid. I'm doing the work, but it was just on the surface. I wasn't getting deep beneath. And when I decided time to come out of hiding is when all the breakthroughs came through. Stop right. resisting know the beauty of who i am inside and outside right so yeah and now now that you've shared with the world you know with your family of course first and 
the world regarding your sexuality? How has that changed for you? It's been, it hasn't been easy. I mean, oof. I mean, because I, I was ashamed of it. I mean, and of course, shocking my ex-wife. brought so much pain that not only think I, ref I, I didn't feel I went numb again, which exacerbated the, the dis-ease in my body. She didn't deserve that. Right. Um, and then just really being comfortable with it myself. You know, and when I, I had, I came out to my daughters, you know, I actually did the safe thing, which is, you know, coming out that I was bi, because I think that's what every gay person does <laughs> that I'm learning. <laughs> it's just safe, right, to do that. Yeah. And um, I did, but I knew deep inside, you know. And so it didn't matter how long it took. It's okay. And so I have shame about that. Why did you come out? You know, these, some people are coming out when they're teenagers or whatever. It was that insensate comparing in my mind, the ego that has kept me in this loop. And in terms of, um, you know, being a gay man, it's been, it's been interesting, you know, coming out a little piece by piece, you know, a few people here, a few people here, and then on certain calls. And then I did it on Facebook. I don't know. When did we meet? <laughs> it was, I it was, it was, was, it, was it December? Yeah. I think it, was it was December. It was December. Yeah. And then just getting it out, it a, a load of bricks lifted. And then I started to think about, oh my God, I haven't told so and 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 so, and they might be heard about that. I can't control any of that any longer. Right. You know, so all those things are happening, and I'm seeing the wound, the little child, and all those things surface like in real time, and knowing and being fully aware of what's happening. Going, okay, how do I be in this moment? And so I've just learned to unconditionally accept what is and stop arguing with what is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in terms of relationship wise, I don't know, I, I'm not fully, I'm still not discovering myself, but I'm getting comfortable, you know, to put myself out there uh, i'm not sure if i'm ready or I, I who knows but um yeah that that's where i am and it's been cool because a lot of people have been of course supporting and accepting and loving and it's like all you know the things that i worried about i gotta say this one thing really quick because i came out to my dad and um you know, he's, he just turned 89 the other day. <laughs> We're sitting at the kitchen table. <laughs> I, I, you know, I just kind of led up to it. And, and I told him, I'm, I, I'm like, I'm gay. And he looked at me, he goes, oh, I knew that. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what? He goes, your mom told me. I'm like, what? <laughs> I said, before she died? And then he started laughing because, you know, it was like, no, she came to me last night and told me. But because moms know, right? Right. Um, and it was just a, a, a load of bricks, once again, lifted. And he, just the love that he gave me and acceptance. It's like, man. Yeah. So um, it's, it's cool to experience this freedom. Mm -hmm. The freedom yeah. and not, being, not having to be a chameleon anymore, right? Mm -mm. No, no. No, and I think that's one of the things, Dal, is that um, I've definitely learned is this idea of filters, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what being a chameleon does, is you put on different filters, right? Faces. Mm -hmm. And 
we do that to mask who we really are. And I got a hit, I got a hit a couple weeks ago that God wants those filters. Yeah. How we filter a message, how we filter who we really are. You know, how do we let that fear stand in the way of fully expressing, you know, being free to be and free to act and free to express. If one is not able to do that, we're filtering ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. And wow. so I am exercising and working through a no filter life. I mean, I might use a filter on like Instagram. It's like, it doesn't define me, but it's like, I'm talking about the real filters. You know what I'm saying? Right. But even those filters, I'm like, I ain't afraid to use a filter. Lord knows I need one, but oh well. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I, I can relate yeah. to everything you're saying. You know, I believe we, as humans, we mirror each other at where we're at, you know, in our journeys. And for you to be able to say that you were a chameleon, I, I, I second that motion. I there with that when I worked for corporate America. And I believe that many folks, when we do work for, for other businesses and what have you, we're taught to have that customer service, right? Mm -hmm. Which that customer service means you put up that face no matter what. Mm. And being in that leadership role that we do carry, it's not easy for us to really be authentically ourselves. Why? Because we're here walking alongside our team and trying to help guide, mentor, and bring ourselves to that next level. And sometimes yeah. being truly who we are, right, which is emotional, which is opinionated, which is judgmental, you know, all of these things is the reality of how we are as humans. But right. what I'm hearing from you is that not only did you recognize what you what you were doing, but you've also been taking action for yourself with doing the work. And so yeah. what is what is doing the work mean to you today? Now that you have mm -hmm. gone through all of this learning, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you talk about thousands and thousands of dollars, right? With mm -hmm. all of these amazing thought leaders in yeah. the, of the world. And so, you know, being you being a mentor to so many, including myself, and you being able to express yourself, even to me, I know that we've had these very hard, dark, intimate, keeping it real, exposed, raw conversations. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, I still love you. I still yeah. love you for who you are. Right. And so based upon all the learning and all the growing, I would love to know today how are you doing the work? Yeah, great, great question. Um, the work, man. Well, you know, as you asked a question pointedly about, you know, today, right? Um, so shadow work has been quite the adventure for me. And in a nutshell, I'm not licensed to counsel, coach, or anything. You know, I don't have a psychology major. Um, I'm not a shaman. I'm not a pastor. I mean, I don't have any of those. What I have is I went to the school of hard knocks, you know, and I have a master's in knowing who I am. And so the work has been kind of, I liken it to the journey that Dorothy took, you know, and the wizard of Oz and, you know, you know, another one of my good friends, Jude, who so poignantly used to always share with me, you know, how that journey is a mirror to our lives. And so, you know, I look along the way and I see that I had to stop and, you know, with the three characters of the scarecrow, the tin man and the lion and say, and, you know, in terms of the mind, I know I have a brain, but what was my mindset? What was I focused on? What were my beliefs? you know, and really take time. And it's a, I know it's a part of the work that you do in terms of 
you know, mindset, but it is really understanding, you know, like you always just talk about the brain and in your frontal cortex and like, you know, the neural, neural, I never can say that word. You always, um, thank mm -hmm. you, you know, and understanding the inner workings and like it, and that I'm not my thoughts, they come and go, you know? And so it's like, wow. And then there's a scripture that I love is like, God has not given us a spirit of fear but a power of love and of a sound mind. So I was mm -hmm. like, all right. And then, you know, going to the 10 man with the heart, you know, and really looking at that, what are the motive and intentions of my heart? And many times they could be mixed in with the mind, you know? And so I know my heart. I love my heart. Mm -hmm. I, I do not hold back to express. And I was very self-conscious of that for so long. It's like, damn, why can't I talk and not cry? But it's like, I'm so happy God gave me that heart. Mm -mm. I would not give that back. And then the cowardly lion, you know, it's like, yeah, it's about courage. And to me, vulnerability is the fruit of courage, Absolutely. you know? It is not knowing what the outcome is going to be and doing it anyway. Right. Sharing the intimacy of what you're thinking and believing and knowing that someone may not understand it, accept it, maybe even ridicule it. But I'm going to contort and, you know, like cover up my true self. So when I put myself out there like that, and it's taken advantage of not seen, whew, for a people pleaser and someone who is a recovering codependent, it could take you for a ride, yeah. you know? So along the yellow brick road, you know, there's a wicked witch from the East or the West, <laughs> one of those. I know who that was in my journey. Yeah. And, you know, all along the way, there is just, you know, these um, necessary roadblocks and twists and turns that are meant for my highest good. And I always thought it was about, okay, what am I getting wrong? What am I doing wrong? What did I, don't I get? And those weren't the questions that I should have been asking myself, you know? And so, you know, you get to Oz and you pull back the curtain and there ain't nothing there. There's this man behind the car who's narrating. I'm like, who, what? <laughs> and it's like, you've taken this journey and you think you're going to get it. But all it does is it returns you back to really what you want, which is to return home. And so ironically, of course, and you know, you know, I'm talking about this home in your heart, the core of who you are, that heart. And as I returned there, I'm like, I'm back, <laughs> you know, to me. And so then it was about knowing who I am. And that's where things started to really shift is I gave myself permission to say, you know, Joseph, you did such an amazing job protecting yourself. And there was no need to, you lived the design that uh, a life that wasn't necessary design in the way that you've lived it. But there's today, there's a now moment. This is what you know today. And so I do my best not to regurgitate the past, yet I find myself many times residing there again. And so I've learned that the work comes in when things happen day to day and I'm triggered or I get a remembrance of something or I hear a song, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> you know, and it's like, I don't want to hear that song, or it reminds me of, that's where the work is today for me, is in the moment. It's not on the meditation mat, even though I meditate. It's not, you know, you know, listen to a thousand hours of this and taking this program. I'm on the court. I am in the arena. So when there are people and places and situations that come my way, rather than pointing the finger, I'm like, what are you trying to tell me about myself? What are you reflecting back to me so I can see the false part of me and who I really am? 
that's the work right now. But along the way, yeah, I had to do some soul searching and starting with the inventory, you know, really asking myself tough questions and then seeing how I showed up. And I had this image of myself and, and rightly so, I'm a good guy, I'm a giver. But when it goes to the dark side, I can be nice so I'll be liked. I can be giving so no one will leave me. I can be giving so you understand how much love I have for you. That's not necessary. And so the suffering that I had was also a big part of my own doing. And then when I learned about the mirror and reflection of the world is my own, it's a reflection of who I am. I started to see, oh, damn, <laughs> how I look at these things that I was, I was banking truth on. This is how they are. This is what this organization is about. This is what, you know, yeah. it was a reflection of my own bias, reflection of what was happening inside of me. So mm. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but. No, yes. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. And I can relate on a lot of different areas you pointed out. Um, you know, change is very difficult for us humans. And it starts with the awareness, right, of what we want to change. Yeah. And when we talk about changing our neuroplasticity, that's one of the hardest things for us to do. So it's like, how do we do it? You know, and I know for you and I, we're definitely constantly wanting to learn and grow and expand, though I know at times we've had conversations, which I chuckle at this one because um, there, there are times you'll be like, Dell, you got to listen to this one. And then I listen to it and I'm like, yeah, brother. Yeah, I know. I know. What that I get you. And then it's like you when I had told you, yes, read this book or listen to this audible. And then you realize for yourself, you're like, yes, okay, I've heard this before. And but this time I had an aha moment that was different than the yeah. other time I listened to this. Yeah. And that's important there is that the reality is that we're constantly going to be given lessons, right? Mm -hmm. And these lessons will keep coming at us and keep coming at us if we don't really process it and learn it. And yeah. so what I'm hearing from you is going through your experience of being brave and mm. being able to speak from the heart and using the voice, right, to be able to yeah. articulate it, which you're so good at. You know, I, I tell you all the time that I love mm -hmm. hearing speak and when you're on a roll there are times where i wish we would have recorded the conversation because it's like, hey, right. those were golden nuggets there <laughs> and so to hear you say that you have gone on a quest and we're still on it right it doesn't mean this learning journey ends it's a constant learning and growing but what you're seeing for yourself is that even though we have this awareness, mm -hmm. it's really putting into place when the challenge comes, right? Not when we're Absolutely. on our yeah. mat, not when right. we're in prayer, not when we're centered in our nervous system. It's really mm -hmm. when we have been provoked, we have been yes. triggered, right? Yes. And then mm -hmm. I know many times we've called each other because we're triggered, we're provoked, and we're ready right. to do shit we don't want to do. And, I mean, I don't know how many times I've called you on my way to somewhere, right? And I'm just like, Joe, I'm about to drink tonight and I'm going to let loose. And this wild child is going to be out of control. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you help me compartmentalize it, right? I'm just like, okay, yeah. I could get through this. And it, yeah. it's something like that, that I know it sounds so silly, but at the same token, not everybody has that. And mm -hmm. for me to be able to have my mentor as someone that I can call and or send a message to and know that I'm not going to be judged and know that I'm going to still be loved unconditionally. Now, that's yeah. what love has to do with it. 
Ooh, and so okay. I, I am so grateful for you to be the emotional man that you are. I believe more men need to do this and need to share from the heart space and mind coherence. Yeah. I know this is yeah. logic. Sometimes the logic just doesn't make sense. But when we use our internal guide, which is the love, and we go from that space, I know we feel more fulfilled. And mm. so one thing that I didn't like about myself that I now love about who I am is being <laughs> emotional. Is being emotional. Uh, yeah. Because right. just like how you said that you, you are an emotional man, I love it because then it allows me and others to open up. And yeah. now deep down, I know we are some tough, tough humans. We're resilient. We have grit. And I say that because for you to go through heart surgery, right? Kidney, you blind in one eye, pre-diabetic or potentially in the diabetic phase. Oh, you I'm know, diabetic. <laughs> diabetic, okay. Yeah. Um, mm. Motion and, and being able to walk right without being uh, comfortable on your own. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, brother. I, I, no. And let's let's continue. Not that I'm trying to point out the negative or whatever we feel is the negative. But I just right. want to share with you your resilience and your grit. And you still show up for everyone else, which is you've gone through financial hardship. You had mm -hmm. to be honest and open with your children, your ex-wife, your family. You've had to accept whatever is going to come at you, whether they're going to love you or, you know, disown you because of it. Right. Then going through all of these health issues and then yet you show up all the time loving and caring and giving to everyone yeah. around you. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being that because we need more of this. And this is why I'm so grateful to be with you right now and have these hard discussions and really be like, who is Joe? You know, mm. where, where, where is he at today? What's going yeah. on? What unexpected things are happening in your life that maybe a year ago you saw it that you were going to be in a different space, right? But yet yeah. life just threw you some waves mm. here. And now right. how are you going to deal yeah. with them, right? Which is right. The trigger. So tell me, when you're triggered lately, right? Let's say in the last 24 hours, what have mm -hmm. you been triggered with? And how did you handle <laughs> it? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah, there was, um, there were some triggers for sure. And... I, I appreciate them, to be honest with you. They don't feel good immediately. But because I'm aware, it's like, okay. I mean, yeah, I I have the tools and the, and the understanding of how to really pick that apart quickly mm -hmm. and not trying to be perfect about like, you know, there's a lot of people who feel when you're a coach or a speaker or, you know, you have some depth of knowledge that life is like, it's easy right. and that these things don't come you overcome something you are healed from something those things still come back you know and there's a lot of residue and some things in my body that i notice and i'm appreciating some things that i thought that i was good with that come up it just happened the other day um i think she'll be okay if i share this but um i have a really close relationship with one of my cousins and you know, she's reached out to me and asked, you know, hey, can you give me some insight about, you know, some things she was dealing with at work? And so, you know, me, it's like, what's happening on the surface is not what's happening. If you want to go there, let's go there. And I love her because she's so game to like learn and like, you know, she's, she's such a loving person. And so we've had some really strong conversations. And, you know, me, I'm always connecting it to it. It's your, it's, it's the little, part of you that is in the driver's seat right now, you know, and so, and it's showing up in work at work. So in those conversations, you know, she's realized like, wow, I can see that coming to life. 
So anyhow, she's she's uh, we're messaging and she's sharing a big win for herself. And I'm, I'm like, yes, I love it. And so I responded back and, you know, to the nature of, see, you thought this was going to happen. It didn't. You know, I'm so happy for you. And she typed back. She goes, can't you just be happy for me, fool? And she goes, why do you have to analyze everything? Oh. And I was like, what? And then I said, OK, this is written communication. So it could be interpreted differently, right? But I let the trigger go. I was like, mm -mm, I'm going to go on with this. This is going to be where, you know, the old Joe is going to come out. And I'm like, and I started to blame and shit and going, how dare you? I did this for you. I did this and this. And how dare you say that I'm analyzing? You, 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 know, you know, you you wanted my analyzation, like, you know, da, 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 da. And I made her the bad person, yeah. you know? And it's like, what up with that? And then calling me a fool triggered me because there was this one individual who I let call me that. Oh, and it so all that came up and I reacted. Right. Mm -hmm. And then just like I know to do, I, I know not to leave that. But, you know, so I distanced like, you know, I typically do space quiet. And I knew I was doing that. So that's the work, knowing what's happening and being able to say, okay, shadow has risen, shine a light on the shadow. That's like, you want to get rid of the shadow, bring it to the light. Right. Because, you know, what's happening in the shadow, parts of us are the parts we don't want to look at. So we'll come up with a defense. And the defense was, how did. Everything okay? Oh, yeah. It just, my screen went blank. Yeah. So sorry about that. No, okay. Um, help me recapture what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you were catching yourself in the trigger, right? Yeah. And then yeah. Were... Right. Yeah. And so then you know, the next day, um we connected and she's the same beautiful, vivacious, alive, fun, loving person that she is. In other words. It was my interpretation of what happened, you see, and what I made it to mean. And that's where I know that me, you, and everyone else suffers because of that, what we assign meaning to. Okay. And so what she wrote, I made up in my mind, this means this. She doesn't appreciate me. She doesn't da-da-da-da-da. How dare she, you know what I mean? And then the story goes. I'm like, wow, look how quickly we can get into victim, right? Okay. But it's so we had that conversation because I want to practice what a healthy relationship is, mm. you know, bringing these things and kind of telling them myself, okay, honestly, I was trigged. And she was surprised. She goes, really? I mean, <laughs> oh, why? Right? When you share it with somebody, they go, what? So right. it was my stuff. She had that. And the poor thing was explaining, no, 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 no. You don't need to explain. I'm sharing with you. I'm coming to you saying, this is what the work is. Yeah. It don't have to be hard, but I'm on the court every day, you know, so people who judge and who are going to say something about this podcast or who something had to say about the previous version of me, you in the seats. When you come down here on the court, let's talk. Right. But until you do that, I have nothing. I, I can't hear you. I love you. Stay where you are. But when you can get your ass kicked and you can look at yourself. And you go, I see you because I see me. We're going to connect. Yeah. So that's where I am today as it relates to, you know, the work, how I work with triggers, all those types of things, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. I, and I agree with you. Let me turn off my phone because I do not want to be hearing dings right now. I'm like, I'm speaking right my brother here. And I love that. I love that you say that, Joe, because, and sorry, I know you, you go by Joseph, but I like saying Joe. And so, <laughs> you know, that's important. Being able to communicate with a person that's triggered you, even though it wasn't necessarily intentional, right? To hurt you. Right. She didn't mean to hurt you or trigger you, 
but yeah. by you bringing it up is what yeah. helped solve the emotion behind you and then behind her and and yeah. that's huge we know we know that usually as humans either in a relationship we separate due to communication and finances right those are usually the two big things and infidelity right so and this is just partnership across the board and mm -hmm. with brothers sisters you know people we love we care for colleagues mentors coaches all of this is very important that we start coming from a space being able to speak to one another on that emotion mm. because what i yeah. believe happens and continues to happen with us is that we hold it all in our nervous system mm -hmm. and then we wonder why as a collective we are going through a very big mental wellness you know i would say trigger and i say mm -hmm. mental wellness because that's that's my three pillars you know with my business as an entrepreneur and and if you don't mind i'm going to kind of back up our conversation a little sure. and you know being able to relate to you i know exactly what you're talking about working for corporate america you have to have this character of you know having your shit together right um being that mentor that is not exhausted that is not stressed out that is coming from a space of professionalism and for me personally gosh these past two years have been such a point of freedom for me because i am choosing to be who i am and that's not easy for me because yeah. I've been taught to be that chameleon, right? right? It's like when I'm in corporate America, it's like I'm suited up, pump up, and I am ready to give that customer service. But at mm -hmm. what cost of right. not being myself? And I right. know, and I can remember that at times when I try to voice up my opinion, I was reprimanded for it. And so imagine as an adult being told you can't, and then you want, we wonder as a collective, why we're all hiding and putting the mask. It's because <laughs> yeah. people go to work, they gotta be one character, and then mm. you get out of work and you get to be your own character. Well, mm. what if from a corporate level, trickle on down, we start to teach a culture of being who we are, being able mm -hmm. to have those conversations right around mental wellness. The reality is that we all suffer from mental illness. Many of us have it at different, I would say, um, that chemical imbalance in us due to our childhood, due mm -hmm. to how we cope with it, and due to how we choose today, whether we recognize it and we show up in the court, like you said. Yeah. And so I, I just yeah. want you to know, brother, that I'm so fucking proud of you. I'm so fucking proud of you because none of this is easy. So when people sit there and judge this podcast today, now the question I have for everyone is, are you taking off your mask? Mm. Are you keeping it real with your loved ones, with your friends, with your colleagues? That's a mm -hmm. good question. And what does love yeah. have to do with it? So tell me, brother, what does love <laughs> have to do with it? Um, it is a center of mom, my life and what I operate from. Um, because love is radical, unconditional acceptance. And I mentioned it before of what is. And so it's like, you know, it's not a feeling. You can feel love. Right. But for me, it's been uh, this point almost, you know, moment to moment around choosing it. Right. Acceptance, full acceptance. And so it's it, it's the it's why it's why I live. <laughs> it's why I live. And I know that, you know, 
um, I had a, a failure in um, um, a business that I had uh, this past year um, and finally closing it down. And we sold uh, a shirt that said, love is still the answer. And I believe it is. But then one of my you know, mentors said, what if it was like, love is not the answer unless you become love? Because when you become it, when you understand it and you get the depth of its power, it is the answer. But if it is the flighty, anemic, sentimental part that I think society looks to, right? Mm -hmm. The love that, you know, they people think it is <laughs> and it's not, yeah. right? That's, that's what I'm here to do is to be a role model for when something is not accepted or it is, what's the word I want to use? I mean, you've heard me say that we punish the most traumatized, <laughs> mm -hmm. the people who are traumatized the most, those who are incarcerated, those who, you know, right. what, I mean, society makes fun of them. So it exasperates that trauma. That's how we're conditioned in this country. And probably, I mean, I'm sure the world. Right. I'm here to stop that, to say, I'm not here to be a world saver or anything. It's just my world. And in that, there will be a trickle effect because I understand energy. But what I've laid aside and gave up is the grandioso, I'm going to create something and allowing God to use me, you know? And it's mm -hmm. like, I have seen so many times where, um, is my screen frozen? Yes, I just realized that right now. I was like, you're frozen. <laughs> that's not the most like um flattering. <laughs> you're like, so, oh, yeah. um, sorry, where did we leave off? Oh, you were talking about love and how we punish people that are experiencing their lows, right? And you pointed that out, which is very important. You know, in my journey of learning how to love myself um, has been interesting because it, it, going back to like judging, judging people for their appearance or their color of their skin or their background, um, the reality is that no matter what status we're at in life, that we will have a loved one, someone in our family that has either gone to jail, to prison, that has done, you know, things in life that say society wouldn't agree with, um, you know, having partners that have betrayed us or have done hurtful things. The reality is that I believe now more than ever, humanity is waking up to what self-love is. And so what I what I enjoy about working alongside you, Joe, is that you caught my attention when Love Wave, you know, you were recently speaking about your business. Um, and I believe in that, people's energy. And I do believe that the power of each other gets us through here on planet earth and so if i were to continue to sit here and judge on people thinking oh based upon their status right whether it's um uh, their identity of their their title in life or their career or say their status on their finances um if i did not evolve to create more love in my heart for myself on through my dark moments, right? I've hit rock bottom. I filed bankruptcy. I am divorced. I have two sons that I am co-parenting with. You know, I, from a, a status point, worked for a bank. I felt that I was successful. 
um, and then losing all the financial status, losing the the um, title of what I was doing that made me feel that that was my identity. And so when I think of, you know, people being in gangs, when I think of people that are homeless, it doesn't matter who we are. Everyone is seeking and wanting that love. And so I believe that when people go into gangs, because growing up, I was raised in a tough neighborhood. Um, you know, my surroundings was nothing but gang members. And so when you're in that environment, you kind of latch on to that. But what I realized for myself is that at a very young age, we were seeking that love. You know, my mother, she hardworking Latina, you know, doesn't read, speak, uh, read, speak, nor write English coming to this country, trying her best, having abusive ex-husbands, you know, um, a lot of infidelity, a lot of abuse in the home. So when you're brought up in that environment and you're yearning for that love and that safety and to be seen and to be heard and to be loved, then we wonder why as a collective, we are all experiencing this where we've lived our lives with not being able to have somewhat of a healthier environment. And so when I hear you, you know, speak from a space as what does love have to do with it? You know, I believe that love has everything to do with it. And it starts with loving ourselves. And what does that look like, right? So share with me now, as of today, what do you hope for, for your listeners to learn about you today of what it looks like for you to love yourself and then being able to pour into your cup so that you can overflow to others? Because I know you shared with us not too, not too long ago that you were people pleaser, right? You were doing a lot of what you were doing to, to feel accepted, to feel loved. And now you are shedding all of this. You're taking off the mask and you're telling the world that you're ready. And so what would you like and what do you hope that your listeners take away today? Oh, I don't, you're on mute. I, uh, okay, I think you're on me. Can you hear yeah. me now? Sure can. Man, we're still going to, well, I'll edit this shit, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it all happened um, for a reason. It's a good thing that you can edit, right? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so repeat the question, Del. Mm-hmm. So what do you hope that your listeners take away today with what does love have to do with it mm -hmm. so uh, now now not only for the listeners but also for yourself right like what do you really what are you placing in your mind recently of what does love have to do with it and then you want your listeners to know that too and to walk away with yeah thank you uh from me you know, the idea of self-love, once again, it's um, it goes hand in hand with, of course, self-acceptance. And I think that you find that love for self when you get to accept who you are, but then it's about knowing who you are. So my journey has been, of course, from a spiritual perspective, is I got my first point of identity through accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior when I was a Christian. Now, today, I have left the church, but I brought Jesus with me, <laughs> still the center 
of how I operate. And I've known him more expansively, actually, since leaving the church. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also, as you know, I've shared with you that I have come across human design and gene keys. Mm -hmm. And I've just touched the surface. I mean, I've got a couple layers and have learned the, the I'm just fascinated with the accuracy of these readings is seeing like, wow, this is who, I mean, accepting that, right? Yeah. And it was, it was, I was afraid of the dark. So when I faced myself, it was because those parts of me had an absence of love. And love is radical unconditional acceptance of those parts of me that survived was a surviving part of me was the one that wanted to be loved and seen the hurt part of me all those pieces of it loving that humanity and i've always talked about i am you know the convergence of humanity and divinity you know and that's why i'm like yeah i'm a messy human because I always thought it's about, you know, the looking good club. Mm -hmm. You know, how do things look to everybody? Right. Those things are, 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 you know, to say that that's all gone, I'd be lying. Because right. we operate in this world where everything is predicated on that. Yet, I know in my heart of hearts, that's just, I'm shedding all that. There's so many layers. So I would tell those that are listening that the, the, the key piece is finding whether it be God, source, universe, whatever moniker that you give, this space energy and this higher, you know, sense. I mean, this this higher. I mean, it's just so indescribable when you find that in you, and it abides in you. You'll get is like, oh, it was here all along, but it was clouded with all of the things that I created to hide it. So however you do the work, do the work. It doesn't have to be my way or Delphina's way. Right. However you get there, get there. And where's there? It's home. Yes. Because that's where your maker spirit resides, returning home to you. That's what I would say. I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. You know, I I think um, more now than ever, humanity really needs to look at themselves and, you know, being honest with ourselves for who we are today and forgiving ourselves for what we have done and perhaps what we are doing. And you know, and see how we can take those baby steps to really look inward and keep doing the work, showing up at the court, right? And it does not mean that it it's going to be perfect. It doesn't mean, it, I love how one of your shirts says imperfect action. Mm -hmm. And I love that saying. Because, you know, for myself, I, there are many areas of opportunity um, for me to learn to not be a person that wants to have it perfect, right? right? And being vulnerable and open and sharing with one another our darkness is important. And I know that my evolution in the past couple of years of working alongside you has been huge because we kind of like ping pong back and forth, right? Where when our mind gets destructive and we're over here, well, should I post this or should I post that? Oh shit, I just said this or that, or, oh, I smoke weed. What are people gonna think of me? You know, I mean, talk about the battle, it's real. And it's all in the mind. And I know for myself, I could never say, you know, in banking, oh, I smoke pot. I mean, now we've come to a whole other level <laughs> in society with legalization, right? We're in Cali and, 
the acceptance of it and what have you. But that ate me up, beat me up for a long time. Not being able to say, you know, I do enjoy smoking weed. I prefer it over alcohol, you know, or yes, I use weed for coping mechanism. You know, I use food too. Um, so I think that the more we're able to have these talks and love each other truly for who we are, yeah. then that's where that mirror keeps coming in to affect and the reality we are one. Yeah. And so the illusion I, that we're separate is what is how we suffer, you know. Exactly. So, great point. Exactly. Great point. So is there anything else that you would like to share with us today before we go and have your listeners know something a little bit more about you or? You know, I think over time, this is really um, a cool jumping off point for me. So thank you for being a conduit and encourager and, you know, just such um, a precious friend. You know? Absolutely. It's my awesome. honor. Yeah, you know, I think you, I had shared with you one time uh, that I mentioned this when I took the stage at Love Wave. And that's the event that I did, you know, about three, four years ago. And, you know, I used to ask, you know, others, like, if when you know about me, the parts that I don't show, you know, the, the things I'm not happy about or the things that I've done and, you know, some challenging things about me, will you still love me? And, I was asking the wrong person. That's something I should be asking of myself. And so I see now that as I was looking for that validation from others, I really was looking for that acceptance and validation from Joseph. And so in that full circle moment, that's what I would encourage people to do. There's the questions that you want others to answer for you is to look inwardly for those answers from you, not from them. And um, yeah, so what this is done, and thank you. I mean, we said, let's just get on and talk. I'm gonna ask some questions of what you know we talked about. And I wanna do more of this. I wanna explore. I, I want to not be perfect about this and allow spirit to move through me. And just like when we had our little retreat <laughs> in Del Mar, <laughs> I don't know if you recall this, but you were on the, sitting on the couch it was after the long day, <laughs> sitting on the couch. We were like, "Ooh, what a day!" And I sat in the chair or you know, right there, and you go, kind of gazed at me and like, "What's going on, brother?" I like when you do that. <laughs> I was just looking out, you know, on the pool area, and I just, I just remember saying, "Okay, God." I accept, you know, the call, I accept the life, I accept the creation, I accept it all. I'm, I'm, I'm saying yes, a full body yes to being and embodying and expressing this creation, you know, and in this earth plane, it's called Joseph. <laughs> and so it's cool. So anyhow, thank you for being with me. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, I before we go, um, I love what you just said. I, I, I love that you said that for people to really look at themselves and accept themselves for all of it. And that's where forgiveness comes into play. You know, we we hear a lot about forgiving others for what they have done to you. But I think if we learn how to forgive ourselves first, yeah, then it is easier to forgive others because then you are able to see your reflection. And that's where empathy comes into play. That's where compassion comes into play. Yeah. And if us humans are able to do that for ourselves first, right. then imagine the ripple effect that we can make on humanity. And this is why the work is important 
And, you know, that I love that moment we had in Del Mar because you tell this story and it makes me laugh because this is just who I am. I'm be bopping in, right? And I have to go to the restroom and it's sunset. And for those of you that don't know me, you will know this woman will catch sunrises and sunset at full force here. I, I love it. And I got there and I, and I knew we had maybe 30 minutes before the sun was going down. And it was during the holidays. And I had never been um, in that area of Del Mar before. And there is a Christmas tree. I mean, it was like, ah, beautiful. It was the golden hour. And I didn't know these little things that are huge now in my eyes and that I'm so grateful for because not only did I take you out of your comfort zone, right? You didn't expect me to be like, let's go. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even give us a chance. I was like, just grab what you need and let's go. And <laughs> here we're getting off the car. And, you know, I, because I am a lover and I'm very nurturing, um, of course, in my mind, I wanted to help you. But I also didn't want to do that because I wasn't sure of your comfortability. Right. And then I remember you asking me, you know, Dell, can you can you help me? And I was like, yeah, like there was no question about it. So I remember locking my arm with you and we're walking towards the sand and the tree. And, you know, I all I could think about is like, this is such a beautiful moment. And we took photos, you know, and at this point we went out to dinner and this, I, I mean, it just cracks me up every time, you know what I'm about to say, but we got ourselves a beer and we're sitting there and we're waiting for our meal to be made. And then I'm like cheering you. I'm like, we are living our best life. And I said it loud because obviously I have a loud voice. And people are in line looking at us. And then your, I think your comeback was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we just laughed so hard because it just came out so natural. No, I think I said, do you need, you want a microphone? <laughs> 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 it's like, you were so loud. And then the whole line like turned in unison to our table. And I was looked up like, oh. <laughs> Let everybody know. <laughs> We're living we are life. living our best life. Like, hello. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I love that because, you know, we have gone through a lot. We have. And we choose to still show up. Mm -hmm. And I am grateful for that because I know at many times in our lives, we've wanted to quit. Yeah. And so there's a difference between quitting and allowing yourself to take time off. Mm. And it's important that we take time off. And what does time off look like, right? We're living in a time more than ever that social media is kind of putting us and ourselves in this light of we got to constantly be doing right. instead of being. Right. And so as we are so passionate on wanting to not only share the story, but also share with the world that, you know, love can be unconditional for all walks of life doesn't mean just because we're family that we have to put ourselves in a situation where a person's not being kind or caring or considerate. Right. So it's important that we realize that love, you can still love someone and you can still let them go and right. you can still have them at a distance. And the important part, I believe, for all of us is to, it goes back to not judging, 
Right. But loving the person for who they are, even if that means in dosage. Mm. And so thank you once again for, you know, not only being such a great, good friend to me, but a mentor, a role model, and a confidant. You know, I, I know that I've shared things with you that I've not shared with any other soul. Um, and I'm grateful for that because then it, it continues to allow me to release, to look at myself in the mirror and to love myself for who I am. So thank you. Thank you for setting that example for us. Oh, you're such, oh my God, you're such a godsend. I, I, I value you in my life. So thank you so much. Um, and for those of you who are listening today, you're, you know, Delphi and I could talk for days and you, you don't want that. <laughs> so, um, but you know what? If you're like um, at Instagram, join me. Um, you can find me at I am Joseph Italic. That's my personal page. And then I'm curating one for what's love got to do with it. And you can find it. Um, um, on Instagram at what's love underscore got to do. And then you definitely have to check out my girl Delphina um, and Instagram at currency wellness. And then any other, uh, other links to other platforms you can find pretty much through Instagram. So with that being said, thank you all for listening and coming along and you know, like getting to see experience and hear what's love got to do with it in our lives so thank you so much and i'll bless you with everybody take care thank you bye, bye.